An important case soon to be before the Supreme Court is called Janus versus AFSCME. The Janus vs. AFSCME decision is likely to be one of the most consequential and controversial cases before the Supreme Court this term. It's a case about First Amendment rights of government workers in jurisdictions where there are unions. Mark Janus is an Illinois state employee and he has brought suit arguing against his union, arguing that agency fees in the public sector violate his First Amendment free speech rights by compelling him to subsidize or support speech and political activity with which he disagrees. The question is whether government unions violate some workers' First Amendment rights by compelling them to support speech with which they do not agree. I'm Dan DeSalvo. I'm a senior fellow at the Manhattan Institute and an associate professor of political science at the City University of New York. I'm the author of Government Against Itself, Public Union Power and Its Consequences. A decision in Janus versus AFSCME in favor of the plaintiffs would impact over 5 million public employees in the 22 states that allow the collection of agency fees from non-union members in collective bargaining units. The issue is that in state and local government, public employees can be forced to pay what are called agency or fair share fees, even if they are not union members. In the 22 states where they are legal, union membership tends to be higher because the agency fee is usually set very close to what union dues are, hence why not just join the union. Public employee unions, they have two main arguments. One is that all public employees who benefit from union representation should pay for that, and that declaring agency fees unconstitutional would allow some public employees to free ride on the benefits provided by union representation. Second, they argue that it's a long-standing precedent going back 40 years that has allowed agency fees, and therefore the current arrangements should stand. Mark Janus's core argument in this case is that collective bargaining in government is inherently political. So he sees the long-term consequences of that union political activity as bad. So he thinks both that his First Amendment rights are being violated because he has to contribute to something that he sees as having negative consequences, and that's why he's brought suit. First, to protect his own rights, and partly to change the political culture of Illinois. The case raises an interesting question. Is there another area of the American labor market where you would have to contribute to an organization as a condition of taking to a job that's then going to engage in political activity? It's not the case, uh, as far as I know, that one takes a job and is therefore forced to contribute to the NRA or the Sierra Club in order just to keep their job. In my view, I think the court is moving in a direction of taking away some of the political power of these unions that was built by violating the First Amendment rights of some workers, and that will provide a context for some future better political environment in those states. If it sides in favor of the plaintiff, Mark Janus, may end up changing the politics of 22 states. In states like New York, California, New Jersey, Illinois, and Connecticut, public employee unions are often the largest spender on lobbying government officials and on campaign expenditures. For example, in New Jersey, one out of five political dollars spent in the state is spent by a single union, the New Jersey Education Association. The change to their politics would come in a three-step process. First, public employee unions in those states would lose members and money. Second, they would therefore lose political power to influence state legislatures and city halls. Third, that would create more flexibility for governors and mayors, state legislatures, and city councils to take tougher decisions in different policy areas like pensions, retiree health care, and more that could change the shape of state and local government in the United States.